Hello and welcome to Sex Class with me, Auntie Josie. Now it's a pleasure to be here. I am your sexologist and relationship therapist. This is where we come to learn. This is where we come to get empowered with information, facts and truth about our sexual life and the things that that actually either make us or break us in relationships. Okay. And we had already finished talking, uh, discussing the issue of STI, sexually transmitted diseases, and we moved on to something relationship uh, oriented. You know, after the breakup, what should one do after the breakup? Is it healthy to move into another relationship? How long should it take before you move into another relationship? The period is relative. The, you have to wait until you are psychologically ready to be in another relationship. Emotionally strong to understand who you really are and to also know that you are actually ready to go into another relationship. That is something I'm going to discuss in this episode. It is time to take a break, okay? Because believe me, if you cannot be alone and appreciate being alone and realize that being alone is a process, it's part of the process of healing and being alone also teaches you to love yourself a little bit more, to understand yourself a little bit more, to discover you, who you really are and what you were in the previous relationship, the mistakes that you made there, correcting them now that you are alone so that you are ready and sober enough to move into another relationship. Okay, into any other relationship. Okay, now, do not move on. There are a few things you need to ascertain. There are a few things you need to check with yourself. Number one, what complaints do you have about yourself? Okay, and what uh, burdens and what bad energies did you carry from the other relationship? Okay, because this will really explain to you why things went the way they went okay if it is you who was on the giving side always forgiving always giving you are always the one carrying the burdens in that relationship always correcting every mistake that was going on in that relationship then it is also wise to step aside and realize that that was time wasted and next time be wise enough to find someone who appreciates everything that you that you do, somebody that you give to and gives back to you, somebody that you respect and respects you in return. These are the fundamentals of a good relationship, okay? The other thing is, whom are you blaming for your mistakes? You know, like, when you sit down with yourself now that you are alone, it is time to heal. There are things you realize that actually you did. Are you blaming anyone for those mistakes? Or are you mature enough to actually take the blame and know that this was actually my making and I am ready to change and then of course start walking towards change to start becoming a better person. The other thing you need to ascertain while alone which is very important is to ask yourself am I happy? Am I really okay? Okay? Do I sleep well? Am I sleeping? Or, and am I eating well? Am I really normal? Okay? Because if this, all these boxes tick, okay, if they all tick, you're happy, you eat well, you're sleeping well, you're all, you know, you're coping well, then it means that you are now ready to start the next phase of self-actualization and realization so that at least you move into another relationship. But if you don't tick in any of those boxes, you're not happy, you know very well that you're not okay after this breakup, you, you are not sleeping well, you're not eating well, then something is not right. If you don't have it checked, if you don't see a therapist on time to walk past that pain and that regret, that anger that is cooking up inside you, it might start consuming you, okay? And lastly, are you harming yourself or are you becoming a better person? Because most people, after a breakup, especially if the relationship has taken so long, we realize that they start harming themselves. They, they start hanging out with the wrong people. They start going to the wrong places. They start doing the wrong things, alcoholism. They start taking drugs and things like this. Uh, it, it, you know, it is their way of coping, but it is very bad because you cannot... And, you know, you cannot, that, that is like creating a problem out of a problem that is already existing. Love yourself and learn to enjoy the process. It is about one 
day at a time. Believe you me, if you give it time, okay? Accept and move on and do not be negative. Do not be the kind of person who goes out of a relationship and you're the one who is gossiping about your ex, telling lies about your ex, okay? Because all this negativity tends to implode and that is how now depression sets in and you realize that you start hating yourself, okay? Now, the other factor is that you need to start building yourself, becoming a better person. How do you do that? People think that becoming a better person is just about sitting around and forgiving. No, it is also about building yourself. Let me tell you how you do this. Number one, if you are, if you have a, a career, work at it. Become a better person in that career. Go study. Uh, become, you know, rise, focus. You understand? And, and, uh, and contribute more to the institution or to the to the company that you're working with. If it is your business, focus and start thinking about growth. Start thinking about expanding, okay? It, this is just becoming more of you. The better of you now has got to start coming out. You understand? Okay, now the other thing is about changing. Change, change, change. How do you do this? If it is, if you, if you, are an alcoholic and you know very well that because alcoholism is a very big problem in so many relationships and you know that it is you who was constantly drunk you spend a lot of time away and this drinking annoyed your partner that is the one thing you need to start dealing with if you know that you are abusive verbally your business is to open up your mouth and just Call, call this person that you love names and make them feel like zero, taking away their self-esteem and confidence, then those are the things you really need to start dealing with your anger issues, okay? If it is physical abuse, you're the, you're the one that was constantly attacking your partner, these are the things you need to start working at. And you can only do that by talking to a therapist so that, you know what a therapist does? They look at your history, they look at your past, and how your past could have contributed to what you are today because you will become a very miserable miserable person if you decide to walk forward with this kind of uh, things cooking inside of you okay if you're the kind of person that uh, has um, insecurities constantly suspecting your partner you are so controlling you understand you're so toxic like that then those are the kind of things you really need to look at because that tells a lot about your childhood the other thing you need to do is travel. I always advise people, when a relationship is over, travel. Because the one thing about traveling is that you experience life, you experience the world, you experience the earth, you experience God through culture and its people. It's an amazing thing. Just pack your bags and go somewhere. Travel, cross the borders, just go do you and have fun, mix with people of a different race really helps. A different culture really helps. A different tribe really helps, okay? And then the other thing, and finally, a hobby. Find a hobby. Because this business of just sitting around, you, you're feeling like your world has come to an end. You don't, you know, you just sit in front of the television. You want to switch it on, but you just sit there and you immerse yourself in thoughts of what is going on in your life. You start feeling useless and things like that just because somebody walked away from you. No, that should not happen to you. The best thing is now to find a hobby. A hobby is the kind of activity that you really love indulging in. It's got to be positive. It's got to be the kind of thing that really uh, nurtures your soul, okay? You immerse yourself in it. You put your time in it and you love doing it so much so that time just passes. That's a hobby. Buy the tools if you need to go on YouTube. You know, just do this hobby. Do this thing. It might actually become the one way to make money you understand so this this is positivity you take you, you know what i'm you know what i'm talking about take time to understand yourself and where you're coming from and then of course where you're coming from will define where you're going to and who who you are as you move forward okay so the other factor is understand love <laughs> this i will discuss very soon what is love what, is, what does it really mean to say that I'm in love with someone? I want them in my life. Okay? Thank you so much. Now, in the next episode, I'd like to discuss the issue of spiritual spouse, a spiritual spouse. This thing is very spiritual because you might be out of a relationship, but this is not the first relationship you're out of. And some of these relationships, you leave without even understanding how you left. 
You are never happy in any relationship and you keep on hoping from one relationship to another. What is the true definition of a spirit spouse and what are the signs, okay, that you can actually, you know, peop, you, what is it, what, what is happening in your life that could actually uh, show that indeed you have a spiritual spouse. So thank you very much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel. And if you really want to talk to me about anything, you can always leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much.